Hi friends! Today is going to be a reading vlog for the 24 hour rereadathon. <laughs> I'm honestly filming this clip after the readathon has been over for like a week because I forgot to do an opening and talk about the last book and do a wrap up. So here we are. It's hard to edit a video when you don't have all of the clips done. The 24 hour readathon was a readathon that I hosted with my friend Kate and I will link her in the description box down below. Basically we took 36 hours out of a weekend and read for 24 of those 36 hours and we were rereading books that we enjoy. I read books that I talked about in my TBR video. I will link the announcement video and the TBR video in the description box down below if you want to know more about the readathon overall. And I did really enjoy this. I do plan to do it again in the future. Don't know when, but uh, hopefully sometime later this year we'll do it again uh, if I can get Kate on board for that. So my first planned series to reread this week was Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins. The series follows Sophie who discovers on her 12th birthday that she is a witch and she over the years has kind of done some bad things that she's not supposed to do. Her magic kind of gets out of hand and because of that she is sent to this boarding school that's kind of like a reformatory school for witches, shapeshifters, werewolves, vampires, uh, fairies, different magical beings who have issues with their powers and who need more guidance. And when she's there they learn that there's been some murders happening and some other things going on and it's just a whole story from there. And the other series that I plan to read is The Hunter Trilogy by Mercedes Lackey. This series follows Joyo Charmand who is a hunter she lives in this world that is post-apocalyptic where basically people who were trying to create the rapture uh, were like setting off nukes that then opened holes into the world that then brought uh, magical beings into our world and these creatures called the hounds they are mostly dog or cat-ish shaped um, the hounds have attached themselves to humans and they help the humans fight the monsters and joy is the leader of a group of hounds and she has been living in this society where they're kind of hidden away and people don't know actually how many hunters they have but she's sent to this big city. The big cities are protected. It's like there's like a reality tv show aspect of it. It's 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 a whole thing. So those are my planned books and we'll go back in time and let past Jessica tell you about her reads. I mean there's all kind of noise. The vacuum's running, the stove is on, it's pouring down rain outside. I picked the perfect weekend for a readathon because hello, rain. So yeah, I have been home for a little over an hour and so I've just started my readathon at five o'clock. It's a little after six. I am getting dinner right now. I am currently on page 140 of Hex Hall, which means I'm about 40% into it. Um, when you listen to seven hour audiobooks on three times speed, it doesn't take very long. So remember when I said I probably wasn't going to make it to all of these books? I'm probably going to make it through all six of these and then have to start on the Amanda Hawking books. I say have to, like I don't want to start on those, but I'm probably going to have to start on those. That's your update. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm actually making burgers and fries for dinner, super easy. I'm probably going to watch some YouTube while I eat dinner and then back to the reading before we get to uh, live sprints with Kate. On to that. Well, I am getting ready to do the live stream with Kate. I have shared the StreamYard link with her. Very prepared. I just finished Hex Hall. The first book of the evening has been finished. Uh, so the next book is Demon Glass, I believe. Is the second book right? That sounds right. I don't know. I, I have no idea. So Demon Glass is next and then I don't know. I'm probably going to work on my planner while I read to this, listen to this, read to this, listen to this. And Merlin is bumping into me, which is very polite of her. Hey Merlin. One book down, five to go, only three hours in of the 24. So, looking pretty good so far. Update time, I guess. 
during the live sprints I read more of Demon Glass and I just finished it. It is midnight which means it's time for bed because I have to work in the morning but I'm two books down out of six so I've been reading for seven hours. I finished two books. I'm ready for bed. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, Kate and I both talked during the live stream about how like we don't really have a specific time. We <laughs> like the 24 hours is very lenient. Uh, so pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna read all day tomorrow until I go to bed and count that as my 24 hours. It will be pretty close to it since I started at five today and then I'm going to bed now um, and I have to be up by eight. So it'll be pretty close to the 36 hours and the 24 by that way. <sighs> but it just depends on when I go to sleep. So that's where I'm at. I hope y'all are, you know, progressing well as well. <laughs> I would definitely say that it's past time for an update. So let's do an update. Where are we at last? That's a good question. So it's now 2.30 p.m. on Saturday. So far I have read Hex Hall and Demon Glass and Spellbound. I finished Spellbound since the last time that we talked while I was at work today. So these two I finished yesterday and this one I finished this morning at work and I have started Hunter by Mercedes Lackey and I am currently on chapter 12. I think I'm on chapter 12. That sounds right. 14. I'm on chapter 14. Currently on chapter 14 which is page 234 which is I would say at least half probably more than half. My phone might tell me, but I don't know where any of my things are. 63% of Hunter. Okay, so I'm home from work. I'm at 63% of Hunter. Let's talk about Hex Hall, shall we? So Hex Hall, I rated, let's see, the first time I read them, 3.75, 4.25, and Spellbound was a 4.5. So I did rate these decent for uh, 2010s-ish witchy YA. Um, the thing about this series is that my ship is not the ship that sails. Um, my ship not only doesn't sail, it has the most brutal ending of all endings. I mean, it's, it's not the most brutal ending of all endings, but it feels like it sometimes when you think about it. My ship does not sail. I'm okay with the ship, but my ship does not sail. And it hurt just as much this time as it did the first time. Um, I finished book two last night before I went to bed and I texted my friend Brianna, who used to be rainy days and stormy nights but does not post on YouTube anymore. But I texted Brianna and I was like, I just finished book two and it still hurts as much as it hurt before. And I'm still 100% this team and why does the ship not sail? And basically, why did I choose to reread this series knowing that my ship does not sail? And she was like, I guess you just like to punish yourself, I guess. I guess that puts us into, should you read this series? Okay, what I think on reread, on a further reread, this book series to me is much like most people feel about like Throne of Grass or the Selection series, how they feel like they are not the best thing ever written, but that it was a really fun time to read. And it kind of transports you back to that time and that place when you read them. And that's definitely how I feel about this series. I haven't read those other two series completely, so I have, I have no... Uh, opinions on those. I feel like the the way they make you feel is very similar um, as far as like these are a great time, they are a fun read. The magic system and the world as a whole um, could be more fleshed out, there could be more there, but I definitely enjoy what happens here. Now the thing about Rachel Hawkins is that I've also read her other series, the Rebel Bell series, which I loathed the ending of. That's the thing about Rachel's worlds is that she creates these immersive and like super fun imaginative worlds, but her love triangles do not work for me. Not just the love triangle because there's not, is there a love triangle in the other book series? I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm never going to reread those ones because the last book is so bad, but I don't think that, I don't like the way she does her relationships and it's not that they're not good relationships. It's just, I don't like the people she chooses and that's okay, but I think the series as a whole is still worth reading. There is one, I have a note. I think it's, I think it's in my, I think it's over here. One second. So 
so one of the lines from the series, uh, from the last book from Spellbound, is um, our main character Sophie is thinking about the the big bad that they're fighting and how really, although they are the big bad, they think they're doing the right thing. They think that they're doing, they're basically an anti-hero. They're doing the horrible things because they think it's for the right reason. And Sophie, the main character in like her internal monologue says, people are so rarely demons in their own minds. And it's so interesting to look at that aspect of you know, we definitely always want better villains in our books. We want villains to be these more challenging and more thought provoking type of villain. We don't want just like you're bad for the sake of being bad. And these characters, these villains definitely are evil on a whole other level because they are bad, even though they think they're doing what's right to save their people. So it's a very interesting take on that aspect. So if you like that kind of society issue, it's definitely there. It's, it's not like, it's not what you're going to get in like an epic high fantasy. It's not that level. It is definitely which boarding school 2010 100%. But I love this series so much. Like, again, they're not rated the best. I have a 3.75 in here. There is a 4.5 and a 4.25, so like not bad either by any standards. But it's not like I've rated the whole series five stars and I'm just like raving about it forever. But it is a really good series and I will read it again. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad that Kate and I decided to do this readathon and those were the books I decided to pick up. One thing I do want to talk about with Hunter, which is the series by Mercedes Lackey that I just started rereading. Um, as I said, I'm about 60% into this book and it reminds me so much and we'll talk about it more when I get to the end of the tr the trilogy. There's a lot of talk about Joyce has a line fairly early on, which I didn't write down and I should have, but Joyce has a line fairly early on that her uncle has always told her that if someone is constantly saying something to you, if they're constantly telling you something, it's usually a lie that they're trying to make you believe. Like in this world, because the hunters are on TV, the thing that the newscaster people always say is like, that's your hunters on the job, keeping our people safe. Or that's our, is it, that's our hunters on the job, keeping our town safe from these monsters or whatever it is that they say. And it's so true in that, you know, we see the behind the scenes of what's happening in this world and we know that what they're saying is an absolute lie. And what I want to put this towards is our current modern life, like our actual life, the real world, if you will. This book is so heavily, like it's it's definitely a fantasy, like there's hounds and creatures from other worlds and, and it's, it is definitely a fantasy. But the way that the, the media, the social media, the the way that we that they perceive their popular people, their celebrities, is so true to how we view things in our real world, and the 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 media aspect of it, and how they kind of keep us dumbed down and onto this level where if we focus heavily on celebrities and the things that they tell us to focus on, we're not actually focused on the shit that really matters, and. That is, I mean, it's it's definitely a big part of this book series, but it's also a big part of our real world as a whole. So again, we'll talk about that more like towards the end of the series, but I, I did want to mention it just in case I forget by the time we get to the end of the series. But um, one of my favorite things I love, um, I, I've said that this series has one of my favorite characters of all time, and that character is White Knight. I fucking love his character. It's so weird because me, who is a pagan witch, loves this character that is... I mean, he's a Christer, which means that he is, which means that he is Christian. But in this world, there has been a uh, basically an apocalyptic event, and some Christers believe that that means that because they were never taken, as it says, will happen in the rapture, that either a their God was never real to begin with, b they were never good enough to go anywhere, or c like White Knight believes it was a fake Armageddon. It wasn't the real end. And he believes that his faith is still enough to get him to where he needs to go. And he still has this faith that people 
will inevitably do what they need to do. And I love that aspect of him because he is a character of faith based so heavily. He so relies so heavily on his faith that it will fix the things that need to be fixed. But he also believes that in, he is the vessel with which that needs to happen. He believes that he has to put in the work in order for his faith to work the way it needs to versus just like sitting there and waiting and expecting something to happen. I really love his character. He's a great friend to Joyo. Uh, again, more things that we will talk about in the future. But I just the more I get into this book, the more I'm thinking about everything that happens in the series. And I just I want to talk about so much of it. So much of this book. So um, I'm gonna get to lunch and back to reading and I will catch up with you guys probably when I finish book one. I'm looking for the book I'm on. I have a lot of books. It is currently 10pm. I have finished Hunter. So that's another book down. I am currently reading Elite and I am on page 152. I'm 46% into this one I believe. So I do still really love these characters and this book and this magic system in this world. It makes me so incredibly happy. One thing that I want to talk about and I may touch on more later. I'm feeling it now so I want to talk about it now so I don't forget about it later. So one of the main issues that people have with this series that I have found. There's a couple of issues. There's two. One is that it's very info dumpy in the first book and that's absolutely true but I'm so fascinated by everything that I really don't care. I am one of those people that like if you're info dumping me information that is like I need to know all of these things. It's so interesting. I don't really mind that much that it's info dumping because I'm just like so enthralled in it that I need to know everything right now as quickly as possible. So that doesn't bother me. The other thing is our main character Joyo Charmand. People have the tendency to say she's very stereotypically the chosen one because she has all of these great powers and all of these things that happened to her that have never happened to anyone else. And there's a thing I would like to point out. In YA, and in any genre that has the stereotypical chosen one. Typically this chosen one is giving these things for no reason. They're born with great power, they're given these things that are you know so much greater than other people and there's no real reason for it. Joy is a completely different kind of character in that she does have special powers like she does have this ability she is a hunter but that's and and while being a hunter is a rare thing it's not as if she's the only one there are a lot of hunters in her world so i mean it's probably only two percent of the population but all two percent of those people would be chosen ones by that standard so i don't feel like that makes her a chosen one i feel like there's a flash on my lap apparently um me talking has has made it so that he must join us in conversation apparently. Um, would you like to go to the outside? Is that the problem? Would you like to go into the out? Okay we'll go into the out and then we'll come back. Okay. As I was saying in this series when Joy is given things that are considered you know special or extra or she you know has this ability that no one else has or you know the magic that is gifted to her throughout this series is not something that is just handed to her. It is given to her because she has done something to earn it. Typically that earn is kindness. Joyo is a character who truly believes that all people should be equal and that everyone deserves basic human rights. People deserve to be protected, to be loved, to have food, to have clean water, to have fresh air to breathe, to not have to choose between living in a world where they are either going to be poisoned by the world around them or to live somewhere that they are at constant battle with demons and monsters. She believes that these people who are on the outskirts of these cities have the right to be protected by these cities and not be thrown on the outside just because the city doesn't deem them worthy enough people to live there. Joy does these things where she protects people. She does things that other hunters wouldn't necessarily do. She's very honorable to her pack, which are her group of hounds, the, the animals that she uses to help her defeat these monsters. She's very loyal to them. She puts them first above her own needs. She makes sure that they're taken care of. And because of that, they gift her abilities that other people don't necessarily have. 
a chosen one is someone who gets things given to them for no reason or just because they are the one. Joy is given these things because she deserves them, because they are things that are granted to her out of her own kindness, because she goes to show to others and to prove to others that there is a better way of being a good human. And that involves a lot in being kind to your fellow man, regardless of what station of life they come from or where they come from. And I think that's another this book series is very important on the big themes y'all and that is one thing that I definitely love about this series. Not only is Joy that kind of character but the White Knight is that kind of character. Um, her love interest is that kind of character and people do mention throughout the series you know it's so strange that you you know people say to Joy all the time it's so strange that you would make that decision and she said this is how I was raised. I was raised on the outskirts. I was raised where my people have to fight for everything that they get, for their food, for their water, for their safety, for their protection. And because of that, I learned to grow up somewhere that, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't squander away anything. You use all of the animal that you kill. You, you know, you share what you have with others and you do what you can to help out everyone because then eventually you're going to need their help and you want them to help you. And because of that kindness, these good things happen to Joy. So to say that she is a chosen one, it really irks me, as you can tell from the 20 minute monologue I just had. Joy is just, I love her character. She's so different from me because I definitely am not that kind of person. I'm very much a selfish, stingy person and I, I, I am not a great person. I'm not a great human, I'm very flawed. That's a thing. Like I just, that is who I am. I can't help that. Joy is who she is. And because of that, the world gives her great powers. I am who I am and the world gives me YouTube. That's what I've got. And a couple of cats. My point is, you can't always believe what reviews say because they're not accurate in this case. Anyway, it's 10.30. Is it 10.30? It's 10.16 p.m. I am going to try to finish Elite tonight and possibly even finish Apex, which is funny because we talked about uh, yesterday during the live that um, combined this is only 17 hours worth of actual listening. So I should have been able to read all of these in my 24 hours, which I technically still have six hours of. So I should be able to read these if I can stay up till four in the morning. Um, I did take like an hour and a half nap earlier. So that kind of cut into my time. I had to listen to the end. I kept falling asleep while I was listening to uh, Hunter. I had to listen to like the last three chapters like four times. Um, and then I finally was just like, just take a nap. And then when you wake up, read it again. And that's ended up what happened. So that's where I am in all of the books. And uh, I'm working on, I think I'm going to listen to more of Elite and work on some graphics for the write-a-thon coming up. And, uh, I think it's what I'm going to do for a little while. So I'm going to go do that. Cool. <sighs> um, we're closing in on the 1 a.m. mark and I have finished. I have finished Elite. That's five books. <laughs> five of them. That's awesome. However, I can barely keep my eyes open even with a nap. So I actually have started Apex. I'm about 10% in, um, but I'm gonna call it a night. I I need I need sleep. So um, also this book has some really devastating things that happen in it that I'm not emotionally prepared for at this time of night. So I'm gonna go to bed. And I'll probably finish this tomorrow and go ahead and add it into the readathon, like this vlog, because it would be weird to talk about it in a different place because I've read everything else. So um, I'll probably just read this in the morning and cry. <sighs> uh, yeah, so, um, you know, everything we've talked about so far, uh, I definitely still enjoy the series. I really like it. I really like the world that Mercedes built. Uh, Mercedes Lackey, if you don't know, is has been publishing books like since the late 80s, I think. 
and this is the only series of hers that I've read and it is actually one of the newer ones that was released like mid 2012 I think it was like 12 14 and 16 maybe or like 13 15 16 I don't know it was 2010s released um, I do have another series of hers that I've purchased um, which is like the beginning of her Heroes of Voldemort or something similar that I don't remember what the name of it is. I'm trying to find it on my unread shelf and it's not jumping out at me. It's not over here either. It's like this thick. How can you not find it? It's not that one. That one's the Holly Black bind up. Y'all, I really can't find it right now. And it is like a giant ass book. Oh, found it. Found it. I can't read it though because it's too black from here. I thought it was a white book. I hope I knew what I was looking for. Anyway, that was a 1am tangent. I have other books of hers. I just haven't read them yet. I do want to at some point, but I just really love this series. So I am, again, calling it a night. Gonna read this tomorrow and we'll talk about more about this and we'll go over both series tomorrow. <laughs> Good night, everybody. now we will discuss Apex. Um, it did take me a lot longer to read this than the others. Uh, I read the other five books as you've seen in like that 24 hour period and I started this one and I didn't want to end the blog off without having finished this book because you know it just would be kind of weird to read the first two books in a trilogy and not finish the third but it you know it took a minute and a lot of that is because I knew that one of my favorite characters was dying and I wasn't prepared for that. Despite the fact that I knew that it was going to happen, I wasn't prepared for it, if you know what I mean. This is actually the shortest book that I read over the vlog. I think it took me like a week to read it because I was just reading like 20 pages here and there at a time. Um, I also had another book that I was halfway through that I wanted to finish that uh, I was putting off. So I was procrastinating reading this so I could procrastinate reading that. I ended up DNFing that after I finished this, but it's a whole other story for another day. This series, it really does. It has so many great things. Uh, we, we've discussed, you know, um, Joy and her lack of what I think being a chosen one and um, the White Knight and how um, he has just some really refreshing views of uh, Christianity and things like that that you don't necessarily see a lot in fantasy novels. Typically in fantasy novels, any view that you get of Christians is typically negative. Um, not always, but typically, which is as a pagan woman is, you know, I'm saying that it's a good viewpoint and I like that it's a good viewpoint. It's a weird thing. I know, I understand. And the last book really has like more of a romance vibe than the first two do. Joy kind of has like a paramour throughout all three books, but you get more of her romance in this. Um, it's still very low on the romance scale, don't get me wrong. You get more of her romance, you get more of her family aspect in this. This one has some twists and turns. There's some really interesting things that just happened in this book that I really, really enjoyed. I love the societal issues. As a viewer of my channel, you know that societal issues are one of my favorite things in books. Like I need it for a book to be a five star book. And I will say throughout this read and the previous read, this was my least favorite of these three books. Part of that may be because of the character death, but also I feel like there are some continuity errors between that the other books and this one as far as like best ways to kill monsters, um, different people, different things like that. There are some, some con continuity errors that kind of pulled me out of the story and it did the same thing when I read them the first time. So it wasn't just that I was trying to read these so quickly. Um, I had those same issues the first time I read the books. Um, 
the interesting thing is like there were like plot twists that I had for completely forgotten about which is great there were some moments that definitely like brought me back around to like being the first time um I actually finished this or almost finished it I got to the the death part um on Friday when I was doing my live stream <laughs> and I'm crying on screen like reading during a live letter spreads doing this try not to cry it was great um highly recommend I just I really love this series um I definitely want to read more Mercedes Lackey in the future I have as I have said I have another series of hers that I do want to start at some point but I think if you like it's definitely dystopian it's definitely post-apocalyptic but I don't think it's it's not like Hunger Games level dystopian it's not divergent level dystopian you know while it is dystopian in our future and they don't have as many of the conveniences and things that we have they also have things that we don't have that would be like future advancements um things that we don't have which is interesting it just it's a really good series and I really liked it so so these are the six books that I reread during the rereadathon let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these and your thoughts comments questions or concerns about them I will also link in the description box below my full reviews on Goodreads for any of those that I do have full reviews on. If you participated in the rereadathon and you have a vlog or if you just want to tell me in the comments below what you read during the rereadathon, I would love to know. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>